Welcome back to the Palmetto Report. I'm Ainsley McCarthy, and today I'm sitting down with President Edward Cerna. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Cerna. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. So, just starting you off easy, how has your first few months as president gone? It has been exciting, it has been overwhelming, it has been wonderful, uh, and it has gone by very quickly. I can't believe I've already been here four months, but it's fantastic to be back in Rock Hill and at Winthrop. So, I mean, tell me about your experience. What has it been like being back at Winthrop as a president and father as opposed to a student? It's a little surreal. So I, I, I walk our dog Cooper around uh, campus at night, and I remember making that same, I lived right here at Roddy Apartments. I remember walking the campus at night too, just to kind of clear my head. It's something I still do 20 years later. And every so often I'll see something or I'll smell something and it'll trigger memories for me of being back at. <laughs> and the craziest one is I was showing my wife, Lauren Thurmond, because I was a business student while I was here. And we were walking down in the basement. I don't know if this is good, but the Thurmond basement smells exactly the way it did 20 years ago. And I was, <laughs> I don't know if that's good, uh, but yeah, it was, it's just triggering all these memories of being back here, and, and they've been wonderful, and I've had classmates who I was here with reaching out to me and giving me a hard time about now being president and teasing me. Okay. Um, they're terrible people, and if I could revoke their degrees, I probably would, uh, but yeah, it's been really, it's been fun being back. You have to use your authority for good. That's time. right, for good. For good. So are your girls enjoying Winthrop? Does they love it. Oh, they absolutely love it, but they now have an addiction to Starbucks. Uh, oh. So <laughs> we, we have to get them lots of Starbucks cards because they love walking over to Starbucks. And our seven-year-old gets that unicorn drink. It's purple with a lots of whipped cream. And so she comes home all jacked up on sugar. But yeah, they've loved the campus. That's lovely. Yeah. Um, so when you visited campus last spring for the presidential candidate presentations, one of your main selling points was that you are a Winthrop alumnus from the class of 2002. What changes have you noticed uh, changes or differences uh, being here now as opposed to when you were here uh, 20 years ago? Well, I would say the campus is completely transformed. Uh, when I left, none of the digs and the West Center, none of that was, was here. So the campus footprint, it just feels bigger. Uh, um, I had a friend uh, visiting from Maine this week and he said it feels like a proper campus. And I like that. It just feels more complete and like we have this wonderful campus now. It's kind of built out. Uh, still work to do, uh, but you know, it's just wonderful seeing the transformation in the physical plan. Um, I still run into faculty members that I knew uh, that had me in class. Um, my wife, Lauren, is again saying, well, please tell me you made straight A's while you were here. I didn't make straight A's, but uh, it's great seeing faculty members that I had too. So, it, you know, it's good seeing kind of faculty members, familiar faces, but then also just seeing the amazing transformation in the, the physical campus. So I'm curious, who did you have for professors and who, what faculty is still around that you see? So uh, I'll, uh, there's several. Uh, so one of them is uh, Dr. Mary Martin in English. Uh, she was out walking her dog. I was walking my dog around campus. And I, said, and I asked her, I said, did I have you for, for English? And she goes, you did. And it was so funny. I remember sitting in that, you know, how English professors like to put you in a circle of desks. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that moment after I was talking to her. And I had her 20 years ago. And then uh, Keith Robbins, the, uh, he was actually the department chair when I was in the management department here. And he's still department chair 20 years later. So just catching up with Keith and with Mary has been really great. That's uh, really fun. Yeah, it's fun. Do they tease you as well? <laughs> Everyone teases me, yes. <laughs> so, um, Talking about the changes and improvements and everything um, that you've seen around campus, um, two of the really big things going on right now are the campus master plan and the campus beautification initiative. Um, those Obviously those are meant to facilitate some big changes, but they're not scheduled to be finished until years down the line. Um, what sort of things do you have in mind to help students who are at Winthrop right now? Well, one of the things the, uh, the board approved, about $5 million to take out of what we call our net position, so think of it as like our piggy bank, our reserves, uh, to upgrade classrooms and classroom technology. Um, they've also dedicated money to start things like power washing and things like painting and things that we can do just to improve the look of campus. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, like more Adirondack chairs around campus. We want students to be able to have these spaces to gather out on campus. So those type of things, especially the investment in classrooms, are ongoing. Uh, the state legislature also approved about $26 million, I think, for us, so about $9 million going into our science facilities, 
about six million between Dacus and Dinkins, and just in other areas. So I think you're gonna start seeing that happening pretty soon. Plus we're taking the two towers down. So that's gonna be something. So we're talking about a, a new uh, dining facility in the next few years. So um, again, we're just getting kind of the ball rolling and all these different things, and you're gonna start seeing things around campus start to change and transform. Yeah. Um. So when you were at your previous university in Maine, mm -hmm. um, they have obviously a lower headcount and a higher annual budget. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of experiences do you have from that institution that have influenced your strategic decisions here at Winthrop? Wow, that's a huge question. Uh, <laughs> I started you off easy. You did start me off easy. Uh, you, you know, I think it's interesting as you spend time at different universities, and, and you know, I, I spent a year as the interim chancellor at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith, which is roughly about the same size as Winthrop. And then, as you mentioned, I went to a smaller institution in Maine and spent three years there. So I think you take those experiences, but you don't want to have a cookie cutter approach. And that's one of the things in the first four months is, okay, understanding where their similarities are and understanding where the differences are and also where we should be spending money. Um, so one of the interesting things that we have is we, we do have some reserves. I think our trustees and George Hine, when he was here as interim president, did a really good job of making sure that as I was coming in that I had resources to invest in areas that were strategically important for the university. Um, so what are those new things going to be? Uh, you know, new academic programs, investments into our facilities, making this an attractive place that camp, uh, students want to come for their four years at college experience. Um, so do you have something specific that you were thinking or, or wondering about? Um, I mean, I just know that um, obviously, like you said, it's different from school mm -hmm. to school, but just kind of, I mean, obviously, and this might still be in the works, but just kind of your plan for how you want to bring those things to fruition. Sure, I, you know, I think one of the great things that we're gonna be able to do, I, I love strategic planning processes. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to strategic planning because I think it's a great way to get the campus community and also externally like Rock Hill and other universities to talk to us about what should Winthrop be? So I think once we come together as a campus community and we say, okay, this is who we want to be, then I think we can start prioritizing what those things should be to get us to where we should be at. Because I have opinions and I have a voice, but I shouldn't be the only voice driving that. And because we are a community at Winthrop and I want everyone to be invested in that. So I think one of the big things for me is just kind of getting everyone together um, and so that we can kind of chart that course. Yep. I love that you're very community minded. <laughs> so speaking of all this, um, the financial side of things and what um, and the budget and what money is going where, mm -hmm. how would you assess the financial health of Winthrop in general? I think we're very healthy. Um, I think there are other areas of the country, including where I just came from, where the financial situation is much more dire. Uh, you know, there are just not as many high school graduates there, and yet you come down here to South Carolina and there's demographic growth and there's economic growth and it's vibrant. Uh, so you, you're not facing all of those headwinds that we're facing in other places. Um, so I, I think the financial situation here at Winthrop is very stable. We just got to get enrollment turned around, and to get enrollment turned around, I think we have to do a better job telling our story about who we are and about why you'd want to be here. Uh, and, and that's fixable. I, I really believe that we're going to be able to fix that in the next year. Uh, so it's exciting for me. Um, I know low enrollment at Winthrop has been an issue for decades. Um, do you have a plan of action to fix that other than the $300,000 that is being set aside for marketing? Well, so what are we going to market? Right? You can throw a lot of money at it, but until you know what you're going to market. Yeah, our enrollment, uh, I actually saw a report the other day that since 2016 we're down 23%. Uh, why? We're, we're in the middle of, Rock Hill is vibrant and there's so much going on. This is a beautiful campus that should not be happening. So I think part of what we have to do this year is figure out why, what's going wrong. And, and I don't think it's necessarily just throwing more money in marketing. Um, I think we have to decide who we are and make that compelling case for about why people should be here. So what is that? Well, we just talked about some new academic programs. So we just talked about new athletic programs because students are going to places that that are telling that compelling story. And we just haven't been telling that Winthrop story in the right way. Um, but to do that, we have to have the right academic portfolio and the right student experience for them to come here. Um, 
I know you've been talking about um, installing new prog uh, programs, academic programs, for students who want to come here. Um, how exactly do we have plan, plan to achieve that um, when, I know just recently, uh, we let off a bunch of faculty. Um, obviously, if we are going to have programs, we need people in those programs sure. to run them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. Uh, so I, I'll say this, I, I am all about data. So we're going to contract with a firm that does market assessments for us, and they're going to look at the areas that we recruit from. And so what are the academic programs that would have student demand, employability, because if we want students to come to Winthrop, I also want them to graduate into a great job. And also we're going to look at competitive intensity. So how competitive should we start an academic program if everyone else in South Carolina has it? Uh, so those are kind of the things that we're going to look at. But in the meantime, so what are we doing? Uh, we met with the University of South Carolina president. Uh, the Clemson leadership team is coming up here to talk to us. Um, I went down to Francis Marion and met with the president. The president of Lander University was here. We met with York Tech. Uh, so we're having these conversations about what are those academic programs that we could partner on and create new pathways. You know, does an R into BSN make sense for Winthrop? Does an engineering program make sense for Winthrop in partnership with another school? And these are the conversations that have not been happening in the last few years, but that we're having now. So I think that's really exciting. If, if there's an opportunity for us to collaborate with another institution to deliver an academic program that we know students want, I think that's going to lead to some real growth here. How would that collaboration with other um, schools work? Like, uh, would it be kind of like a bridge program? or It could be. I think it could take a bunch of different shapes and forms. You know, everyone's going to be individually tailored to what that opportunity is. So bridge programs are a great opportunity for us to expand the bridge programs with the technical colleges. I also think it could be partnerships where we could be sharing faculty resources or sharing students. They could spend a couple of years here and a couple of years at another institution. It could be something like a three plus three law program with USC Law. Or it could be maybe a three plus two arrangement for engineering, let's say so that you could spend your first three years here at Winthrop, you could spend your last two years at Clemson or at South Carolina, and you graduate with both a Winthrop degree and then an engineering degree from one of those institutions. So I think one of the things that we're just doing is we're being flexible and open to all of those different ideas. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of generalize, could you give an overview of some of the things that you have accomplished so far this year, seeing as the first semester is starting to wrap up? Wow. So what have I accomplished in four months? That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll say one of the things that I heard during the interview process is that we, they really, we really wanted um, a president who was going to be highly visible and engaged in the community. And when I say community, I both mean on campus and off campus. Uh, that was going to be having those conversations and that was going to be talking to people and that was going to be highly visible. And I hope in my first four months I've accomplished that. You know, I, one of the things that we've done is just trying to be really intentional about making me available to students in, in a variety of different forums and in different ways. And I've enjoyed that. I've loved that experience. But also to have me in, out in the community meeting with different people and, and being part of different organizations so that we can identify those opportunities to really tie Winthrop in. Um, what else have I accomplished in the last four months? Because uh, it has been so much. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, you know, I, I think it's really been kind of that external facing and, and campus facing, um, getting to know people and understanding uh, how Winthrop has changed in the last 20 years and where we should go. So I, I think that's been really the first four months what the focus has been on. Yeah. Um, do you have any traditions that you'd like to start while you're here? You know, that's a great question, you know, because it, it's interesting at my previous institutions, one of the things that alumni would complain about is they didn't feel like we had those traditions. Um, I don't know what those traditions are. I know we're, we're heading into the holidays and we have the tree lighting and we have all this other, these other things. I, I would love to hear from students about what they would like to see as far as traditions moving forward in different ways that um, something that we do every year that students would be passionate about and, and coming back and remembering. Um, so I'm open to new ideas about what those traditions could be at Winthrop. You mentioned the office hours and the Ask Me Anything sessions. Uh, will those be a regular occurrence? Uh, yeah, so Ask Me Anything, office hours, and also uh, we, we're working a lot with CSL. 
Um, and one of the things that we're doing is that we're meeting with different groups of students. So every month we're hosting, Lauren and I are hosting at the president's house a lunch with students from that group. So we had our first one this past week. We met with four student athletes, Miguel, the president of the student uh, CSL, and then um, Shiggs was there with us. Uh, so yeah, so we were able to talk to them about, you know, what's their Winthrop experience, but to be able to do it at the president's house over a nice lunch and to have this conversation, that was great. And so we're gonna continue to do that every month. Um, and then I'll tell you, again, I, I, I take our dog out, Cooper, for a walk most evenings, and just to like have students talk, stop me and talk to me um, and just to have that happen informally and organically has been really good, and that's something I want to continue. Nice. So your last question is sure. really easy, I'm sure. You easy? Enjoy. Okay. I've heard that you're a Star Wars fan. Uh, what are some of your other interests? <laughs> uh, uh, my other interests, I love cooking. Uh, so after a, not that my days are stressful at Winthrop, but I've had a couple of stressful days. I love to go home and I love to cook. Um, I love, uh, so I love uh, flamenco, kind of Spanish guitar music, acoustic guitar music, and I love to cook. That's kind of like my creative outlet. So I love doing that. Um, I love, uh, I was on uh, Vic Nation uh, earlier this week on the radio. So mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about, I love music from, you know, I'm old. So I love things from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love football, you know, I love uh, things like that. I love athletics, so yeah, yeah. I think being open with students will really work in your favor. Well, you know, uh, students are gonna be alums, and I'm an alumni, so we're part of that Winthrop family, and we always will be. So yeah, I, I, want, uh, I want to have that connection. Thank you for talking. Well, thank you for the invitation. This is great. If you have any questions of your own, or you would like to um, just talk to him as he's been very open about uh, doing, you can set up an appointment with his office or attend the Ask Me Anything sessions in the DeGiorgio Student Union. For the Palmetto Report, I'm Ainsley McCarthy.